we're on our way to uh, Castle Dool. Dorwin. Yep. No. Dorworth. Dorworth. Dur. I know exactly where we are. And Castle Dorworth. I remember John, stay on the right side of the yeah, road. John came the wrong side of the road here yesterday, didn't you, John? Yeah, I came on the wrong side of the road yesterday. And you haven't got your seatbelt on, John. I'm on the right side, aren't I? Yeah. Yeah, but we have got a little bit of a blockage up here. Uh, this could be a disaster. <laughs> yesterday we came up here, and apparently split work must mean road work. And now we're in the... We're in the middle of the road, we're going to knock him over. No, we don't know where we're going. Do we go up there? No. You think? Well, no. oh, I don't know. It's cold, so. If we could have got around this way, surely we would have gone this way yesterday. Oh, right. Ah, well. Oh, for fuck's sake. It's not a lovely. It is road work for a bit of pain in the arse, eh? They're a bit of a spanner. Ah. ah! So we've actually been going the wrong way all the time. <laughs> the yeah. long way. See, it's, a, it's a lot easier way, yeah. Well, that was good actually. I think that was. Now we know. On the last day. What I actually think is great is the amount of time you spend looking at the camera when you're actually driving. <laughs> we did eventually arrive at Castile Dorworth. But our first impressions didn't hold much hope for a paranormally active night. Arriving here today, it's actually quite a beautiful building. I didn't actually expect it to be as attractive as it is. Um, you can tell that it has been rebuilt. Um, and a lot of things in here, rather than dating back to when it was originally built in the 16th century, I think. Um, we've been told that a lot of things now are modern. A lot of things have been added here um, because it was bombed in, the, um, in World War II. Um, but I am quite impressed by it. It's one of those places that you you just think there's nothing going to be here whatsoever. It's a very clean place, very bright, very light, um, very well looked after. And people here are incredibly friendly. Uh, but who knows what's going to happen tonight. It, um, it's amazing to be in a place for the first time outside of Britain, to be in a castle that's supposedly haunted. Um, and also talking to the people here in the Netherlands, they haven't, they just don't really believe in ghosts. They find it all very peculiar what we're doing. Mm. All the ghost walks I've done, I uh, speak to French people and, and um, Dutch people and Belgian people, and, and they seem to say things like, Well, we don't have ghosts. You see, was it uh, ghosts and spirits are not really part of their culture? Um, so there doesn't seem to be that many um, eyewitness accounts of ghost sightings or whatever. There are ghost stories here about this castle. But when you speak to the people, the Dutch, they seem to be very reluctant to actually admit it. Speaking to some people here, they all seem to be into things like goblins and witches and things like that, but not so much ghosts. And I said, well, do you have, what, 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 what's the name for a ghost? And they say, spook. And ghost, uh, now spook, apparently is, is a spirit that you, you uh, an entity. Whereas they say that a ghost is actually um, something that you don't see. The owners are getting very much into it. They're really sort of like, oh, how exciting. So, uh, it's nice. I'm looking forward to it. Right, Tom, where are we going? Uh, we're going to go into the uh, turrets of the castle. Okay. Come this way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
They're stones. <laughs> skulls in the corner. They could have been skulls. Look at that, isn't that amazing, these little rooms. Oh look, the birdie. There is no toilets. And a shoe. <laughs> Our intrepid investigators found bones and a shoe. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. This is amazing. Place, all wooden timber. Look at that. There. Wow. Very noisy, isn't it? Mm. What the? Especially if it's like that. Is that thunder? That's thunder. I know for a fact that if you have storm, a storm. Um, uh, weather, lightning, thunder, it actually increases supposedly the chances of um, phenomena. It's a fantastic looking place and it really is, it's, it's, it's superb with just the way it looks. Uh, there's loads of, sort of big rooms like this one and it's not very, it doesn't feel very scary now but we are surrounded by a wood um, on the road where uh, allegedly a witch is supposed to come on with, with carriage and uh, horses with no heads which will be interesting later on so I'm, it'll be scary later on I'm sure. But. When we had finished filming the setups, night fell and it was time for the vigils. Rachel, Kerry and Kath bravely volunteered to go to one of the most haunted rooms at the location. Well, we have just had a very, very interesting vigil. I've just done my first vigil with Kath and Rachel. We just spent um, pretty much 45 minutes down there. Um, in the night hall. A paranormal investigator came here late last year and did an investigation and he picked up more anomalies in the night hall than anywhere else in the castle. Well, we all felt a little bit uncomfortable I think. I wasn't personally scared. I don't know about the other girls. I know that Cass said she wasn't feeling very easy and I know that Kerry, Kerry has a tendency even though she's not necessarily um, a believer She's a little bit more sceptical, but she can become more frightened by things um, more quickly than I do, personally. Um, so I think they both felt a bit uneasy there, and I was feeling quite comfortable being in that situation. How do you feel, Gary? Oh, I'm a bit nervous around here because I've seen, I've seen the pictures, you know, of them up, moving up and down. And you saw a figure in the background in the pictures. My back was at first to the wall where this um, apparition had been seen. And I really was burning up hot. And she, to be honest, she was looking a bit sweaty. Now, sometimes you think, oh, is it just because we're all in the close part together? But no, we, we definitely, I definitely felt really hot. In fact, she was that uncomfortable that she had to move. And Rachel sat in that position, volunteered to. And then Rachel got really ill. I feel really hot. My, my, my bum just got really hot. All around here. All you what? Here. No, that's from my lower back. Yeah, that's exactly what I felt. Really, really warm. Having been a fan of Most Haunted and watching it in the past, I used to see people saying, oh, I feel really hot. I feel sick, I feel drained, um, I'm not feeling very well. And you kind of think it's a bit, you know, um, you sort of think, well, maybe it's because of, you know, they're tired or they've been spending a lot of time 
running around all day and it's very late and it's one o'clock in the morning, you know, of course I'm going to start feeling sick and, and heady and, um, and very drained. Um, but when I've actually experienced that now for myself the first time, I don't actually believe that it is just to do with, um, you know, conditions. So it's not just a psychosomatic thing. I actually think that it, it, it could be a way of a spirit um, trying to communicate with you. And as Rachel's getting hotter, I'm getting colder. And I could feel something behind me. I'm always aware of things behind me. It's really bizarre. Because when I first thought about doing these investigations, I didn't expect to. I thought, if anything, you'd be seeing things out of the corner of your eye. But I keep seeing things, well, not seeing things, but experience movement and different temperatures behind me. And I felt, felt especially cold. Curry impressively was asking in German is there anybody there because Derek had picked up these German soldiers um, so which was quite clever of Curry to ask in German and every time I said um, excuse me please um, what is your name excuse me what is your name we hear the bang which was quite bizarre I know that Richard and Derek um, and Vince won a vigil in the dungeons or in the basement. Um, so I'm not sure, I can't 100% guarantee that the noises that we were hearing were from them. Now obviously there was bits of, of dust coming up, but then I caught like a big disc, um, which to me looked like a light on it, and I followed with the camera down, um, but th then it disappeared, so, you know, to me something's really going on down there. You have to think what's there and what's going on. Very interesting indeed. What do you need Jan to interpret? Coming up in part two, Corinne's possession during a vigil disturbs Richard Felix. I found it quite disconcerting because I didn't quite know what to do to help her. And is our Castile door with table tipping experiment the most convincing evidence of paranormal activity to date? There was a point where we had our hands uplifted off the table and it was so moving. It was phenomenal. Welcome back to Most Haunted Extra. After the interesting and eventful vigil by the girls in the Knights Hall, we decided to assemble there to carry out the table tipping experiment. we just come back from um from table tilting, which uh, was quite a quite a surprising thing, really. Um, I'm even having a cup of coffee. I don't normally drink coffee. I normally drink tea uh, now, but um, it's it's it was phenomenal. That was just mad. I. It blew me away, quite honestly. It was fantastic, absolutely brilliant. We had four cameras, uh, two, two wide shots, uh, and also myself and Vince. We were looking at sort of people around the, around the table with, who had their fingertips um, on resting on on the table, and I was looking closely at fingertips, looking closely at muscular movements. We literally. Started off as normal with our hands. This is the second time we've done this, with our hands close together, did a little bit of a seance, and then um, Carl was asking and Kitty was translating. It was brilliant. There was a lot of movement, more shaking. It wasn't as um, before, sometimes we had it on the table lifted, lifted off the floor, but um, this time. 
it didn't lift off the floor, it, it moved from side to side. And it was very interesting because I, I, I kept, I kept, I kept very close, I was looking very closely at hand movements and looking at people's faces and I, I tried to cover it as best I could and the table did move and it moved quite violently sometimes. We all took our hands off and the table moved. And I'm supposed to somehow make sense of it. The fact that everyone took their hands up and the table still moved, I found was very interesting. How was that happening? Um, <coughs> I was so dumbfounded by it. I thought, I thought, well, maybe the, it's the floor. I thought maybe the floor, va floor is vibrating. But the floor was made of brick. We were standing on a brick floor, stone floor. Um, I, took, I took my shoe off. Uh, I was standing up at the time, I managed to take a, a, my foot out of my shoe to put my, uh, does, does everybody know what my, my foot on the floor to see if I could set, see if the floor was vibrating in some way. Um, I, don't know, I don't know if I was looking for earthquakes, but I mean, I couldn't feel anything on the floor, uh, but the table seemed to vibrate. And there was really, really strange uh, feelings going around the table. Um, you could feel like a, a, like a cold air, um, definitely like an energy around my feet. I could even feel, um, I don't know, I can't explain what it was like. It, it was almost like cold air, but it was like a tingling, it was a funny sensation that was going around. It's a very hard table to move with your feet. It was a, it was a very rigid table, very thin stem metal stem so you'd have to really thump it and lift your leg up to thump it so it wouldn't wouldn't be easy at all so that's the second time i've um i've filmed the table tilting and um the second time i'm very impressed with it we try so hard to to look at a rational explanation for these things that i think sometimes it's so easy to forget that it just might actually be paranormal. Uh, I have no explanation for what's just happened now. And there's a part of me that's sick and tired of looking for rational explanations. And there's a part of me that just wants to accept that these things can happen. Thank you very much. You okay? <laughs> Before, because yes. before we we took it off, 
one at a time. Yeah. This time, like three people took it off at once, yeah. right? and then we all took it off. Yeah. And yes. I think that is absolutely phenomenal. And the brilliant question you asked was, do we have to do this to communicate with spirits? Do we need this yeah. collective force? Yeah. And the answer was yes. yes. I can't explain that. That was a good question. That was fantastic. <laughs> And what an end to the night. No ghosts in the Netherlands, not much. Um, just been down to the, the White Tower with Jan and uh, um, Karina. And um, we got in there and of course Jan and I sat down at the table. And Karine was standing up and she never did sit down. She, she was possessed. Um, I found it quite disconcerting because I didn't quite know what to do to help her. Uh, I was asking her questions and she couldn't she couldn't answer me. Um, it was like Derek uh, going into a trance and it bothered me because I couldn't get her out of it and eventually uh, Jan called her name and, and she came around, she came out of it. I heard you talk but it was like I was not there and I was just, I was just, it felt like I was being moved. So we decided to go down to the other room and she set off like a zombie and she'd gone again. And I was concerned that she was probably going to fall down or something, but she made it there, went and sat in this next room, and burst into tears. It, it was amazing. I mean, and then we brought her around. I, I called her called her by her name, and she came out of it. Right? Are you back with us? And she was laughing about it. And, and you can just tell when someone's either acting or not. And, and she was genuine. Um, I'm, I'm convinced. We then went to get her a drink and, and she went off again and stood up against the wall as if she'd been hypnotised. We had to bring her out of it again, brought her into the crew room, got her a drink, she dropped on the floor and off she went again for the fourth time. Um, oh boy, I mean, come on, you know, lead us to the next castle in the Netherlands because this place has been great and Europe has got ghosts. What a great investigation. It's been really, really exciting and this is going, this is definitely one of the most haunted most haunted that I will never ever forget. It's just just all, all round a very good night and I've uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. And I'd love to come back here. I think this is going to go down as one of the, uh, the great experiences of Most Haunted. We're all going to have strength for strength. Um, the more the team do, the, the closer that we are. We're, we're like just one big, well, I'd say family, but we seem to be closer than that. There's no sort of feuding or um, there's no nastiness. We're all, we're all backing each other. We're all, pushing forward and, and it seems that it's getting results, it, it's, it's getting results um, and we can't ask for much more than that really. Well that brings another investigation to a close. Tune in next week for Most Haunted and Most Haunted Extra. I don't need milk and um, when we went to Ireland, we had, it seemed their mainstay of vegetarian food was uh, uh, stir-fried vegetables. And it got to a point where if I saw another stir-fried vegetable, um, I would not have been held accountable for my actions. Now, we're in uh, Holland, and There's not a great deal here either, unless you go for Indian or Chinese food, 
uh, who have their own vegetarian spot. There's, there's nothing. You're either going to be a meat eater or go hungry. Um, and at this present moment, I'm quite hungry. Hello. Lovely to see you again. Thank you. 